You ever be playing Street Fighter and Cammy does a cannon spike and you just think to yourself, what if I made a whole arcade top-down shooter for the Dreamcast called Cannon Spike because that move is so awesome? No, you didn't. Well, that's surprising because that's exactly what Capcom thought to do in the year 2000. Okay, I'm joking because Cannon Spike may seem like an extremely random name, but I mean, I suppose everyone you can play as in the game has a cannon, so to speak, because they're all shooting or whatever. And I guess a bunch of them have spikes in their designs and movesets. See, it totally makes sense. No, but the real reason it's called Cannon Spike is that this game was desperately trying and probably failing to convey the fact that you can play as Street Fighter characters like Kimmy or Charlie. Yeah, this is a big old Capcom character party. You can play as Arthur from the Ghosts and Goblins series, Mega Man from the Rockman series, and of course Red Riding Hood on a Razor scooter with an Uzi. Ah, you gotta love early 2000s games. They were so willing to go buck wild with the character designs and damn does this game have some good ones. Especially because everyone's super fast movement speed has to be justified somehow, so they just like slapped roller skates on Charlie, or you've got Shiba Shintaro who has this awesome hoverboard. And you know, I actually thought this Shiba dude was original to Cannon Spike at first, but he's actually based on this character Siva from the arcade game Three Wonders. Yeah, that may as well have just been an original character that looks nothing like the cool shirtless snowboarder with a little Shaman King style ghost familiar that we did get. There was actually only one totally original character though, Simone, and her design is so strong like she deserves to be in more games, but I guess it's okay since the game she originated from is so damn fun. Cannon Spike is a hearty dose of some good old rootin' tootin' shootin' arcade magic squeezed into a little Dreamcast box. The Dreamcast really was a hub for incredible arcade-like experiences, and I'm not just talking about fighting games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 or Soul Calibur. You've got Power Stone, Crazy Taxi, and Typing of the Dead, and yes, that one did have an arcade machine and it was just two keyboards next to each other. Cannon Spike is another one of those incredible arcade boards for the Dreamcast, and it shines in its high-octane arcade shooting action that moves at a breakneck pace which pushes you to move that quickly too. The multiple characters allow for multiple playstyles of course, but no matter who you pick, you're in for some snappy and satisfying fun. So yeah, this game kind of plays like a twin stick shooter, but that's a little weird for the Dreamcast because, now this might surprise you, but this image is photoshopped. <laughs> yeah, the Dreamcast only has one analog stick. So to alleviate this, once you start shooting, you lock into a strafe mode. And also you've got a lock on button that locks onto an enemy based on whichever one is closest to the direction you're facing. Now, you can't mindlessly spam the lock on because it won't lock onto anything if there's no enemies in your, like, vision cone. I don't know, there's probably a better way to say that, but that's the idea. Also, if you're just holding down the button, it won't just auto lock onto the next enemy once you kill them, so for waves of one hit kill enemies, you get into this rhythm of pressing the lock on at just the right pace to wipe the screen super fast in this really satisfying way. One other smart thing is that the lock-on only lasts for a few seconds, so you can't just set it and forget it when facing a boss or a high health enemy. You gotta release it and re-lock on with the right timing every few seconds while making sure you're facing the right way so you don't lock onto a different enemy by mistake. Complicating all this further is that when fighting bunches of enemy waves, you don't want to lock onto the stronger enemies at the beginning because you've got to take out the enemies that go down in one shot first or else they'll overwhelm you with their bullet hell attacks. Though once you clear those jobbers, you'll be left with these strong enemies that take way too long to kill with just your normal blaster. So then you've either got to move in close for some light or heavy melee attacks or find the space to fire off your special ranged attack. Now, all these options have wind-ups and cooldowns, so there's a risk inherent to them, but something that's really cool is that you can cancel the cooldown of the light melee attacks into the heavy one, and then the heavy melee's cooldown can be canceled into your special ranged move. This becomes a pretty deadly combo that's almost like essential if you want to get through some of the boss type encounters unscathed. But even then, you can still get owned if your combo doesn't finish off the boss in one string because you're a sitting duck once it's all over. That is, unless you finish off your combo with an invincible special move, which is basically a get out of jail free card that you only get so many of. You're gonna want to use these pretty frequently though because this game does not play fair. But what's great is that it doesn't expect you to play fair either. What I guess I mean by that is that it feels like most of the bosses were almost designed to be cheesed. Like if you try to play this like a straight up bullet hell while slowly doing chip damage with your standard shot, you're gonna have a rough time. 
Now you might want to play it safe and chip away like this at the start of the fight or if you're low on resources, but the way to really succeed in Cannon Spike is to get in real close for a quick and dirty, cheesy stuff crust combo and kill the boss before they ever have a chance to do damage to you at all. Of course that's easier said than done and not every character is suited for that playstyle. It's really fun to figure out the strategies to make it all work though. The most effective strategy though, for me at least, was definitely picking Arthur, like he is so busted. He does so much damage and stun, and his super move is really useful. But he's pretty slow, so he straight up needs to cheese and one-shot bosses left and right, or he'll get locked down and take a ton of damage. If you're not into that kind of playstyle and you would rather dart all over the place and dodge everything, then there's plenty of choices for you too, like Mega Man or Kami who have great mobility, but just decent melee attacks. If you want something in the middle, go for Charlie or Shiba Shintaro. Now, the one thing dragging this game down from having more mass appeal is probably its length. Like, even for an arcade game, this is super short. My main issue with that is that I don't get to hear the amazing music in this game for longer than like 15 seconds before I'm onto the next level. Okay, no, but really, you can beat this game in like 15 minutes, and so even if you play through it with all 7 characters, that's only an hour and 45 minutes where you're playing the same dozen or so stages each playthrough. But at least the game tries to reward mastery and encourage high scores by allowing you to loop through the game as many times as you want if you make it all the way through without losing a life. But even pulling that off once is so tough that most people won't get to that skill level before they drop the game. For me, I found a ton of replay value, not in trying to make it through on one life, but by upping the difficulty slowly while I got the hang of a character and then once I could beat the game on like normal difficulty with three lives, I'd move on to the next character and have some more fun getting used to their playstyle. Personally, I don't care at all if a game is 15 minutes long and doesn't have that much replay value as long as it was super fun. In that opinion is no secret, I just made a video about games that are all under one hour, but yeah. Even with all that being said, with Cannon Spike, I ended up spending a good amount of hours with it despite the small amount of levels. Something about it really hooked me, and that's weird because I usually don't vibe with any kind of bullet hell stuff, but the unique movement and mechanics of Cannon Spike really set it apart to make it really appealing to me. Like, if you're playing strategically, you can usually take out the enemies before they get off their waves of bullet hell pain, which is so satisfying to pull off and made it feel so different to any arcade shooters I had tried before. Also, it controlled super smoothly, so when I did on rare occasions need to bullet my way through hell, I felt like a god gamer with the way I was able to so quickly dodge bullet waves. The lock-on definitely helps with this too, because it allows you to focus more on dodging while you're still doing damage. And you know, I really can't stress enough how weird it is that I was into this game because I've bounced off like everything bullet helly or even just arcade shootery that I've ever touched before. Maybe it was the ultra quick pace, maybe it was the focus on boss battles, it could be the unorthodox use of melee attacks and combos or the well thought out enemy designs. I don't know exactly what nailed it down, but something about the way Cannon Spike does things just cured my bullet hell allergy. So really give this one a shot if you felt similar to me in the past and you want to see if a different take on things like Cannon Spike could sway your opinion like it did mine. Of course gameplay isn't everything and another big reason Cannon Spike appealed to me so much is the amazing visuals. Of course it's neat to see the nods to other Capcom franchises in the playable characters, stages, and enemies, but that's just neat because it's a reference and that can't hold up a whole game aesthetically. Thankfully, outside of any kind of reference, Cannon Spike has infinite amounts of charms to his 3D visuals, which are a beautiful time capsule of an amazing era of 3D art styles in my opinion. There are so many good anime designs, and a lot of them have these hilarious names like the robot trio of Bob Green, Rick Blue, and Ken Brown. Such normal ass names for mechs, I love it. Then you got the oddball ones like Jungle Master Sasuke or Psychic or Sting. There's just so many fun boss fights with such striking designs. Now the 2D art is just as strong as that 3D art, if not stronger. The main graphic designer for this was Kinu Nishimura, who's done a ton of Street Fighter and other Capcom stuff, and so the Third Strike and Street Fighter Alpha vibes are definitely here in Cannon Spike. Everything is super stylish and detailed, and even the UI is really well done and aesthetically appealing. Of course, what would visuals be without some sweet sounds to go with them, and Cannon Spike has some real bangers.
Like I mentioned before though, you'll likely only hear the first 15 to 30 seconds of most of them because the stages go by so fast. And while I find that to be kind of hilarious, it is worth giving these a listen on YouTube because the full songs slap harder than one of those sticky hand things they used to give out as prizes at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Okay, before I get you too hyped up with those beats, let's take a look at what kind of story we have to go along with those tunes. Well, the only real premise you get is that the world has gone to heck, so we gave a bunch of super powerful people roller skates and hope that they can shoot their way to a better tomorrow. Yeah, it's pretty flimsy, but that's just how I like it. You see, because that way you don't have to stop and explain why you're fighting a giant snowboarding robot, you just do that and you love it. The only other bits of story you get is each character's unique little ending, kind of like the end of an arcade mode in a fighting game would be. Most of them are just little gag endings, like Cammy saving a kitten right before the island base you're fighting on explodes, and a couple are like kind of badass type of endings, like Charlie and Balrog fighting to the death, stuff like that. None of these really get you more invested in the game and its lore, they're more just like little rewards where you get to see the characters you like doing something funny or cool. Okay, well I guess talking about the endings is a good place to end the video then, and hey, if you're on the fence about trying out Cannon Spike, just know that you could have already beaten the game one time through and formed your opinion in the time it took to watch this video, if you're a god gamer at least. So you really have no excuse to not give it a whirl. Anyways, yeah, it's just pure and simple arcade fun that'll get its hooks into you if you let it. So if you've been looking for something that's super easy to pick up and play, but has a ton of room for mastery and mechanical depth, then give Cannon Spike a shot. Alright, that's about all I've got for now, but let me know any Dreamcast games you love that deserve more attention like this one, cause I've been having a lot of fun lately exploring the Dreamcast more obscure hidden gems, and I want to try more of them, you know? So send them my way, and thanks for watching, see ya in the next one.